Hey folks, Chad Perkins for Red Giant, and in this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to cover what is arguably the most amazing feature in all of form, distorting the form particles with fields. Now my goal here is to get you beyond a basic working knowledge and help you really understand this feature. So we're going to start with a very brief introduction to Perlin noise. Then we'll see how this noise is implemented in form in the fractal field. We'll look at how to use noise to add randomness to the size and opacity of particles, and how to displace particles with noise. Then we'll shift gears to look at a completely different feature with a similar name as we look at spherical fields. And then we'll put it all together in a practical application and show you just how much fun all this distorting business can be as we make this accent for an animated logo. So again, we're going to start here in After Effects. We have a solid with the fractal noise effect that comes with After Effects applied to this solid layer. Now this fractal noise effect uses the same style of noise, the same algorithm, Perlin noise, that Form uses for its fractal fields. So using this in a much more visual, clear setting will help us really understand what's going on with Form when we get there momentarily. Now to start, I'm gonna come down here to the complexity setting because essentially what this noise is, and same with form, is that it stacks like layers of noise on top of each other. And that gives us big areas of brightness and darkness, but also gives us a lot of fine details in between. This allows us to create tons of randomness and beautiful organic textures. So if I take complexity down to one, we'll only be working with one layer of Perlin noise. It's a very different look, but you can really see what's going on underneath the hood as we take that down. As we take this up to two, you can see that second layer. As you take it to three, you see more and more detail. Take it back to the default of six, and now we have really a complete pattern here. In the transform area in Fractal Noise, be aware of the scale value. As we increase the scale, it uh, smooths out our texture essentially, making it bigger and softer. As we reduce it, we get more detail because we're scaling that pattern down. Take that back to 100 for the moment. We could also increase the contrast, which makes the brights brighter and the darks darker. And we could also take the whole floor of the brightness and increase it. So all the pixels are universally brightened or take this to a negative value where all the pixels are universally darkened. I'm gonna undo that. And keep in mind too, that we can come down here to the evolution value and adjust the evolution value to evolve this noise. Now, this might seem like repetition or might be new to you, but either way, remember all that stuff because we're going to see it again in form in just a moment. And speaking of, let's go ahead and hop over to a 1920 by 1080 comp with a solid and form applied. And as we've done so many times, I don't really need all of these particles. I'm gonna take the particles in Z down to one, and I'm going to increase the size to be really big like this. And I'm going to uh, maybe take down the sphere feather just so we can see what we're doing. Take the size up to seven. There we have these big circles. That's really clear what's going on. I'm also gonna change the color to something a little bit more desirable here. Maybe like an orangey color, something dark. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and click okay. Now I'm gonna close up base form, close up particle, and open up the fractal field section. Now here's how this works. It's a little interesting. So there is this fractal noise pattern behind the scenes, kind of like we saw with the fractal noise effect inside of After Effects, but there's one going on behind the scenes in form, and it's auto animated because this flow evolution value by default is set to 50. So it's almost like the evolution value in fractal noise constantly animating all the time. But we don't see it because it's not applied to any attributes. So as soon as we take effect size, effect opacity, or displace to any value other than zero, then we apply the animated fractal map to that attribute. So as I increase effect opacity, we allow the fractal noise map to affect the opacity of the particles. And the more we increase this, the stronger the influence is. But again, once you take it to any number other than zero, it's now going to use this animated fractal map to affect opacity. Now we could just take flow evolution down to zero and not have it animate, but that is the default. So now if I move in time, we can see that this pattern evolves. If we took down opacity to zero and increased effect size, 
that fractal noise map is now going to affect the size of the particles. So even though it's a similar look, it's a completely different result that's happening because these particles are just getting smaller. They're not getting more transparent. Now, for most of this tutorial, well, as we look at these parameters, we're going to be using effect opacity. It's a little bit clearer to see what's going on. But the real magic of this is in displace because as I increase displace, then uh, form is going to use that same fractal map as uh, a displacement map to move some particles forward and some particles back. So as I increase displace and we keep going, oh, now we're getting that characteristic form beauty. Because what happens is the particles by default are in the add blend mode here down at the bottom of the particle section, the blend mode set to add. And so as these uh, particles are distorted along this fractal, they start overlapping at these edges and creating these bright little highlights. And that is the beauty of form. Now, just for right now, I'm gonna take this place down to zero and increase effect opacity up a little bit just so we can see what the fractal is doing here. Now, because this fractal is auto animating, and because in the native form UI here in After Effects, you adjust a property and you can't see what's happening, it's better to adjust the fractal field parameters in the designer. If I click the designer here, we can see that this is automatically animating. So already you can see why this is just a better way to work. But this works for other values as well. I'm gonna just go ahead and click on the fractal field block to get its settings in the control area and take effect opacity down to zero. Now watch as I increase displace. You can see the movement of the fractal field displacing the form. And as I adjust any of these values like flow X here or F scale or you know, whatever, we can immediately see the impact that these changes have on our animated form. No need to preview or render or whatever. So the designer becomes a much better way to work for things like this. But for tutorial purposes, I'm going to cancel these changes and leave the designer just because it's a little bit easier for me to teach this from the regular form UI. So let's talk about some of these parameters here. We have the displacement mode. And actually, I'm going to take effect opacity down to zero and increase displace. Let's say to 50 for this. Eh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe closer to 100. We have XYZ linked by default. So kind of like with the base form size, all X, Y, and Z axes are linked to just this one displace, but we could change this to X, Y, Z individual. So we could just displace this along the X axis, or we could displace this along the Y axis. Actually, let me take this down to zero and displace on the Y axis there. So just up and down, creating some kind of like sound wavy type things there. Uh, and we could also just do a Z displace. So it's coming out at us or not. And that could create some cool like three-dimensional looks as that comes towards us. It's awesome. Now I'm going to take that down to zero. You could also displace the form radially. Now this might look like Z axis displacement at certain values, but Z displacement displaces everything in parallel along the Z axis, while radial displacement displaces everything away from the center, which might be a great choice for creating something explosive, for example. Now, as we play around with this, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll realize after, you know, the fractal field displaces my particles that maybe I don't have enough resolution. Maybe I don't have enough particles. Uh, so I, I keep going back and forth oftentimes to particle and to also to base form to adjust the size of my particles, the shape of my particles, the opacity, the curves, all these different things to perfect it. So um, you don't typically go in a linear order, which again is why the designer is so great because it's all kind of there in one spot for you. But I'm going to open up base form here and I could uh, increase the particles on one axis and you see the difference that that makes. Now that is quite a bit of particle, so I'm gonna undo that and not work like that, but just be aware that that exists. We could also increase the particles in Z, which can also create some really interesting patterns as well. So I'm gonna get back to where I was, close up base form and come back down here to my fractal field settings. And I'm gonna take displace down to 100 and take this back to XYZ linked. Now we're not gonna talk about this too much. We already had a movie on curves in this series, but just be aware that the curves can exist here so I could uh, adjust the fractal strength over the x-axis. And let's say I didn't want any fractal distortion. And then I wanted to gradually come in towards the end there. Uh, I can do something like this and then smooth it out. 
so that we kind of get some a little bit more distortion as we go. So we start nothing here, and then we just have this kind of like wavy distortion at the end, which again can be used to create some pretty cool effects. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this, turn the effectal strength over to off. Now we mentioned the flow evolution value. So this is just kind of like evolution of fractal noise. It's, it's kind of just like rotating around, kind of undulating a little bit, um, not in any one certain direction, just kind of like moving around where it is, just shaking it out. <laughs> and so what we could do instead, if we wanted to, I'm just gonna take this to zero so we can see this a little bit more clearly, but we could increase uh, flow X. So this almost creates like a wind effect. And the higher this value is, the more intense that's going to be. So like right now, it's a very high value, so it's moving very quickly. If we took this to like five, it'd be a very slow, very subtle effect. Same thing with uh, the Y direction. So if I'm creating some type of fire, a lot of times I'll um, use a negative flow Y value so that it ascends. Just gonna go ahead and reset these to zero and I'll increase flow evolution back to 50. Now, if you're liking the speeds of everything you've gotten, you just kind of want to move the the uh, the form around a little bit. So maybe it's not in the exact right spot. I find this is often something I do when I'm using form to, as an accent to text, like we will later. Um, you might want to offset the evolution a little bit to have a different starting place. Just gonna undo that. Be aware that you could also loop the fractal field, which is really, really cool to create like an endless loop. So to do that, you could check flow loop and then choose the loop time in seconds. Now this will, let's say you wanted this to loop over five seconds. So let's change it to five seconds. This will create the first frame and the frame at five seconds as duplicates. So they're the exact same. So what you'll need to do then is make your loop one frame shorter so that you actually have a perfect seamless loop and don't have that duplicate frame in there. By the way, you need to make sure that you have uh, enough uh, movement in the fractal field in order to create a loop. So if it has like that really subtle um, movement along the X axis that we looked at before, which is barely moving, it's going to be really hard to make that loop over, you know, maybe two or three seconds. So if you're having that case and, and it's not able to create a, a seamless loop, you might need to increase the loop time or the flow values in order to create a seamless loop. Now, what I'm going to do here is take this place back to zero and increase effect opacity a bit so we can see what's going on here. And what I want to do is talk about these rarely discussed options at the bottom with these really complicated names like octave multiplier and F scale. And just talk about a little bit about what these are. Now, my purpose here, because these do get technical, uh, is I just want to give you the practical application of what these values are doing. There's a great... Uh, help online. You can go read the actual details of what these things are doing if you want to get into the nitty gritty. But what we want to do is just give you a basic knowledge of what these things are doing so you can really control form and make it do what you want it to do. Now, what these things do, what these values do here from fractal sum down to octave scale, these are going to adjust the Perlin noise map. Just like with fractal noise, we have all these settings like contrast and brightness, and these change the fractal noise. Well, it's the same thing here with form, but remember that this fractal field is the thing that controls like the displacement, for example. So as we learn to adjust these settings, we'll really master fractal field displacement. Now let's start with fractal sum. This changes the way the noise layers are added together. If we cho choose abs noise, abs is short for absolute noise. This kind of adds more of them together and usually gives you a brighter result because it's adding them together. It usually creates a little bit more detail. I like to set this usually, uh, leave this set to noise. Gamma is like the contrast, but it works the opposite of what you might think. So a lower value, I'll take this to 0.5, a lower value actually gives you more contrast and a higher value like 1.5 gives you less contrast. So you go ahead and right click and reset that. Add subtract is kind of like the brightness value. If contrast is like gamma in form, then brightness is like add subtract. So as I uh, increase add subtract, it's like raising the, the base level of all the values. Now, because add subtract universally 
brightens or darkens all of the colors, I find that this works better when you're using effect size and effect opacity. So for example, if I take down effect opacity, increase displace, then when I take this down, you see that it just basically shifts all the particles at once. I don't find that to be as helpful. Again, that's just with this place though, but I'm gonna increase uh, effect opacity again, and I'm gonna take uh, add subtract, I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. Now, min and max are kind of interesting. They set the minimum and maximum values for how bright or dark the Perlin noise map is allowed to go. So if we bring these, let's say I'm, gonna, I'm holding down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC to get really fine control as I scrub these values here. But as I bring this up, I gotta be subtle here, you see that the darkest that we get actually isn't complete black. I can do the same thing in the opposite direction with the max values. So the bright values kind of come down a little bit as well. So I find that this is kind of a cool thing when making kind of like plateaus out of, like if you wanna make like kind of like a digital uh, geography scene. So I can create a new camera here and I'll use the uh, unified camera tool and rotate this down so we can kind of create like a, like digital geography here. And maybe I'll fiddle with this a little bit more. Maybe we'll bring in some displacement. Maybe I'll take flow evolution down to zero and increase the displace value a little bit more. Then maybe adjust min and max even more. So we have something that kind of resembles a little bit like a lo-fi computer displaying some geography. It might work better if I only displace this along the z-axis, but you can see how the min and max values have created these kind of plateaus that have flattened out the, the highlights and the shadows of the Perlin noise map. Sweet. Okay, I'm going to reset min and max, and I'm going to take this place down to zero, and I'm going to delete the camera. Okay, next we come to F-scale. F-scale works in the opposite way that scale works here in fractal noise. In fractal noise, as we reduce this, we get more detail. As we increase it, we get less detail and we, we zoom in. But with F scale, larger values create more detail and lower values create less detail and bigger shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. And complexity, octave multiplier, and octave scale, all are different ways to add more detail to what's going on. So remember, complexity adds more layers. It does that here as well as in fractal noise. So as we add more layers, you can see more detail. And keep in mind, this is gonna add more processing power though, like say with complexity. Now we have 10 layers of fractal noise and we have a little bit more detail right here on these edges. If instead of doing effect opacity, we did displace, those little amounts of complexity probably aren't gonna be noticeable and probably not worth it. So as I take this down to three, it makes a very subtle shift, but is it worth all that extra rendering of the extra layers of noise? Uh, probably not. So keep in mind the difference that these things are going to make with your current setup. Okay, now before we get to our project, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this place and we have our particles here. I wanna talk about something that seems like it's related but actually isn't, and that's the spherical field. The spherical field is nothing to do with the fractal field. There's no fractal noise, it's not auto-animating. It just allows you to create a ball, an invisible ball that's a field that will displace your particles. So there's two of them if you want to use them. To see, the, to see them, we need to increase the strength, and now you see that. So we have this sphere, this invisible sphere, and I'll use my camera again to move around this. Oops, I need to get my camera back, new camera, and I move this around. And so now we have this invisible sphere that is displacing these particles. The strength refers to how much the particles are displaced. The radius refers to the size of the, uh, the sphere that's displacing them. Now, to really see how cool fractal field and the spherical fields can be, let's see them in action in a real project. So I have here this um, project that I've created. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the form layer for right now. Uh, I have here this text that comes in, and this was inspired by this TV show I saw about these things that are strange, but even stranger than that. <laughs> and uh, so this text comes in and I want this form electricity to form. I wanna create this very stereotypical form look by using fractal field distortion and spherical distortion to create some kind of cool energy 
fields uh, moving around around that. So I have a solid here. I've applied form to it. I'll go ahead and click reset just so you know that it's just basic default application of form here. I'm gonna go ahead and select my regular selection tool. I'm gonna give you some settings to kind of dial in here. I'm gonna change box grid to box string. So we have these horizontal lines here. And I wanna be able to adjust these individually, these parameters individually. So I'm gonna change this to XYZ individual. And I'm going to take size uh, Y and Z down to about 70 or so. Just kind of want like a strip of particles. Maybe I'll even increase size X. I kind of want just like a band, a band of particles. Let's add even more strings in Y. I'm gonna take this to 100. You can't see this here because it's just very dense. And I'm gonna take the strings in Z down to two. So we have just two rows of particles in 3D space. Now, when I close up base form, open up particle, I take the particle size down to one, and I'm also going to change the color. I'm gonna go ahead and click the color swatch. I want a dark color. I'm gonna choose, and actually I'll just give you the values here so you can follow along with me. I'm gonna give you the RGB values. It's five, and then I chose 23 and 30. And again, because this is the add blend mode, uh, we're seeing this kind of like bright blue, even though our color is actually really dark. Now, here's where the magic is, folks. I'm going to close up particle and I'm going to increase or open up the uh, uh, fractal, fractal field and I'm going to increase the displace value. And as we start displacing this with this beautiful blue color and all these particles, we're going to start to see this very characteristic form magic. Again, just so you can see like the before and after. So there's a displace value of 20, a displace value of 50, a displace value of 100. And we're starting to see that characteristic form magic look and i'm just going to take this to uh 200 which takes it from kind of like that silky look to more of kind of an electric uh kinetic feel here now if you wanted to you could soften the edges here they have a hard edge uh, on this edge because the opacity is strong all the way to the sides uh, we could go into particles we talked about earlier with the curve and change the opacity curve uh, you could also, because we're dealing with strings, go into the string settings and adjust the taper value. So I could just automatically taper this with just a simple drop down. I could take opacity, uh, taper opacity down to smooth, and then we get some nice fade outs at the end. I'm going to avoid doing that just for right now, even though this looks pretty dope. I'm just going to take this back to off for right now, close this up, and go back to fractal feel. And actually, we're done with fractal field. So I'm going to close that up and now open up spherical field. And we get to see what both of these types of distortion do when they're applied to the same form at the same time. Now, I'm going to increase the strength of this. And you just see this kind of this little ball in the middle. It's a little dinky. So what I want to do is actually increase the radius quite a bit. And as I do that, watch the size of this sphere. And you see those particles start to distort. Actually, I want something around 500. And now we see that we have the fractal field distortion giving it this kind of cool energetic look. And then we have the distortion of this sphere as well. Now, I don't actually want a perfect sphere. I want to adjust the size of this, the, the perspective of this. So I'm going to take the scale X down to 90. So it kind of scales in a little bit. And then I actually want to take down the uh, scale Y down to 50. So it kind of makes like an oval. Now, this is pretty cool. But what I really want is I want to kind of have this like pointy shape at the top and come down and then spread out of the text and then go point down towards the bottom. You know, because everything is kind of pointing down towards the bottom and it feels hellish and scary. So I kind of want both spherical spe fields going at the same time. Now, all of the work I just did was on sphere two. I thought I was on sphere one, but uh, I, I missed something. I, I missed it. I used sphere two instead of sphere one, which is totally fine because they're both just two independent spheres that work in the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a value here of about 70 again. Now, I take up this the radius a little bit here. We don't need this one that big. We want this one really tall. So I'm going to increase the scale Y value. And as we increase this, you'll see now we're getting some distortion here. And now the particles go way up here. And actually, I might just want this a little bit wider. Scale in X so this curve is a little bit smoother right here. So now we have this shape that starts up at the top comes on the sides and goes in the middle. We're not really seeing it though. And the way that I change this or what I did in my original project was I animated the base form. So what I did is I started at the top and I adjusted the position of the base form. 
So we're up at the top, set a keyframe for this. And I actually did, I went up and down a few times, but we'll just skip that for now. But as I go down with the base form, the base form wraps itself around the shape. And this is really one of the keys to understanding the fractal fields is that the form and the fields are completely independent of each other. So if I solo this, you can kind of get a better deal. Maybe I'll change this to uh, off so we can see what's going on. And I'll just actually won't animate this for the time being. But as I move the base form, you'll see that the structure moves, but the fields are still the same. So you could actually move the form through the fields and create these really elegant looks because the fields, the fractal fields stay in the same place. So it creates these kind of cool ribbony effects. And that's really what I want to take advantage of with this look. And actually this dips a little bit too deeply here. So I'm going to take down the uh, scale Y maybe to like 500 of that vertical. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to center this fractal field. Actually unsolo it. We'll start up here, set the keyframe for base form, go out to two seconds, move it down. And I'm going to go ahead and set the work area that big and then just preview that. Now, I love that. I love this kind of magic that form makes with the fractal field and the whole bit. It's just, it's just magical. It's so energetic elegant and in this case kind of creepy a little bit now a couple little bonus things here i mentioned before that the fractal displacement and the base form are not really linked and you could move the form separately than the fractal field but what if you wanted to move both together what if you really like the way this shape looks base form is not going to allow you to move this whole structure over so the way that you want to do this is that you want to come down here to world transform. Then I can take like X offset, for example, then I could move this shape and the whole thing moves over the fractal fields and the spherical fields and the base form and everything. So world transform is a great way to transform, just basic transform, just scale, position and rotation, move the whole scene over a little bit. This also is tremendously helpful for compositing form into live action footage for visual effects. Now in the final version, I added another uh, layer, a layer of form dust here, and kind of like uh, in the uh, the upside down, we have these particles here, and this is basically using the same technique that we covered with the star field earlier on in this series. And I also use an expression to make these uh, the form particles flash. And that's it, folks. That's the ins and outs of fractal field displacement and spherical displacement inside of form. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial. <laughs>